Hey, hey, party people, welcome back. This is the next installment of my hair series. The first installment goes over the basics for how to do 99% of hair renderings and the reason why I approach hair renderings the way I do. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and watch that first because everything in this video will make more sense if you watch that first. So now that we've gone over the basics, I'm gonna demo some hair for you guys. So as usual, if you guys have seen my basic marker rendering tutorial, I will link it below if you have not, um, you know that when I do marker renderings on marker paper, I like to A, test for the right side or the wrong side of the paper, B, make a marker chart of the colors that I'll be going over and layering them together to see how they work together. C, draw on the wrong side and render on the, on the right side with my markers. So I drew some basic hairstyles and now I'm gonna render on the right side. I like to use a scratch sheet because some of the marker will bleed through and I don't wanna waste a brand new clean sheet of paper. So rule number one, address hair as a shape. And as you can see, I've drawn all my hairstyles as basic shapes and not individual strands of hair. The second rule, render in the direction of the hair grows. And then I'm gonna leave the white of the paper for highlights. So for this one, let's say this is my light source. And so I'm gonna do my roots. My highlights are gonna be here. And my highlights are not a big blocky shape. Rendering in the direction hair grows. And then I'm gonna do another highlight here. mind I'm gonna do another highlight on the top but not as big as the other highlight So rendering in the direction hair grows, leaving white of the paper for the highlights where the hair would lift up and curl towards the light. And then I'm going to take a color pencil and go ahead and test your color pencil right on top of your marker and see if that's an effect that you like. I like that better, that's more subtle. So I'm gonna get in there at the roots. And I'm gonna, you know, give some wisps so we don't have helmet hair. I'm gonna add the texture. I'm gonna make the tips darker. And I'm gonna make the insides darker because it's away from the light. I'm gonna take a soft lead pencil and just punch it out some of that texture and the hairs. Right? So that was pretty quick, right? The whole point of the, the, the style of rendering is to make it pretty quick. And you see you have this dark, so you have some depth where this is the inside and so it looks 3D. And then the hair with the highlights and the dark roots, it looks shiny. She is ready for her Pantene contract. Yes. So let's do some bangs. And remember how I said that highlights go across the direction of hair and not along the direction of hair? Because if you have bangs like this, 
and your hair is going in this way, you're not going to highlight along that. It would just look like a skunk stripe, which would be cool, but not what we're going for right now. So you highlight across and then, you know, you highlight in kind of a zigzag to accommodate for the texture of the hair. I did this one with the chisel tip. This is a chisel tip. I'm going to do this one with a brush tip. So you can go with either for beginners, for hair and fur, which is basically hair. I recommend the brush tips. So again, we're going to, and we're going to give me those wisps. Let's say your highlight source is over here. So I'm going to do the highlight bar across the bangs, but make them slightly bigger on this side because that's my light source. Go ahead and use, maximize this pretty bouncy marker tip to create the hair strokes. You know, I think of marker as a quick drying paint and I use the marker tips like my brushes and maximize on the brush strokes. So this marker, this cocoa bean color, is pretty dark, so I'm gonna punch it up with some black. Again, dark at the roots, little center part in her hair. Dark at the tips, always rendering in the direction hair grows. And add some wisps so she doesn't have helmet hair. And then make sure, little heart-shaped bob with little pointy bangs. When you have pulled back hair like this one or this one, I wouldn't concentrate so much on giving major highlights. Like something like this where, yeah, the hair is going in this direction, so your highlight needs to be in this direction, but because this area is so short, you wouldn't really see a lot of highlight. So I wouldn't worry about that so much. Again, rendering in the direction here goes. Again, rendering in the direction the pigtails are sprouting. And let the shapes be a little bit organic, because that's hair, right? That's the beauty and the annoyance of hair. It'll freaking move. So always test before you work on your final. See, if I went here, the hair would look brown. If I went here, her hair would look more ruddy. So the pairing of the marker and the color pencil can really impact the outcome of your hair. So again, like the roots. And I'm going to make this side darker because it's away from the light. And then I'm gonna kind of make sure that highlight remains there. So you see that this is the light source. This is darker, this is darker, this is lighter, this is lighter. Ponytails again are just another shape. You see this like platinum hair. And yeah, I can give her a tiny bit of a highlight. You have a little bit more room to work with. Much like how roots of hair and tips of hair are dark where it gathers together, whenever you have hair gathering together, like at the base of a ponytail, you want your hair to be slightly darker. So I'm gonna move my highlight down here. I'm gonna have a highlight here. And then I'm gonna have another highlight here. And then the tip is gonna be dark. Notice I'm not just like laying down the color like this, okay? Because it just doesn't look like hair. It just looks soft and flat and matte. And that's awesome for some things, but not necessarily for hair. It loses the vibrancy and the texture. And remember how I said you don't want to add highlights with whites? Now here's a white marker. And that just looks like she has paint in her hair. She doesn't look like natural highlights. Same with if you use dry media. You know, this is what I would do if I wanted to add a skunk stripe to her hair or add grays to someone's hair. Like I have, like I don't really dye my hair, so I have some random grays in here. And if I wanted to emphasize that, I would sharpen the hell out of a white pencil and I would put those in. But it doesn't look like highlights.
add some wisps. You know, if you're looking, going for a more subtle look, you could have left it before I added the pencil. If you want something that looks more punched out, go ahead and add the pencil. And I'm using fairly realistic hairstyle colors, but there's nothing stopping you from doing any of this in crazy cotton candy Sailor Moon, anime, whatever colors. But here's the thing with that is, for designers, when we're working with hair, hair is a part of the whole package and not the standalone piece. And if you're doing portrait illustrations, then yeah, maybe hair is going to be more important. But when we're doing our design illustrations, you don't want people to look at your design boards and and focus on the hair. Hair is just part of the package. And so even if you want to do crazy green hair because that's your customer. You know, your customer lives in manic panic colors and is always gonna have some ridiculous hair ombre effect with giant uh, splotches, whatever. You know, whatever it is, maybe that is your customer, but you have to present it in such a way that it doesn't take away from the designs. So yeah, you could do, um, you know, huge swirls of magenta hair, but Make sure that works with everything, you know? If you're a designer like Betsy Johnson, where it's like huge splashes of color and, you know, candy cane stockings and, you know, yarn, like crazy hair accessories and models are doing cartwheels on the runway, then yeah, big swirls of magenta hair will work. If you're designing for someone more like Giorgio Armani, where grayish is the uniform everywhere, maybe the magenta won't be as welcome. Hair is fairly easy, but when you're practicing hair at home, and you should be practicing, just keep in mind that hair goes on bodies. And so go ahead and draw some with a body like this and practice rendering around the body. I'm gonna keep that kind of dark because it's in the back. So these are gonna be light and in the front. That's in the back, that's in the back, that's in the back. No, that is not armpit hair. Constantly rendering in the direction the hair is growing, going, waving, blowing. I had a student once who was obsessed with Sailor Moon. <laughs> she always had these like really feminine, elaborate hairstyles. That's cute though. You know, number one rule, just make it look good. So you're going right up to that pencil line, but you're not, you're gonna make it look like it flows behind. Questions, comments, leave them below. If you want an alert for when I'm going to upload the next video where I cover curly hair and wavy hair and kinky hair, afros and dreads, hit the subscribe button. Until then, practice. Remember, I am not made of magic, I'm made of practice. Practice, practice, practice. See you next time.